Hello everybody, Steffi here from The Makers. Oh, this is so exciting. This is the first time we have got a make along for our surprise box here on Facebook and then also on YouTube. So wherever you're watching this, welcome. Um, exciting because um, when we put our surprise boxes together, we always have kind of a theme in mind. And of course, this theme we actually called make along um, to start off and to kick off our make along um, to I apparently I have to switch my microphones again they should be absolutely fine but I um, have no idea how I did that last time so I'm gonna have to play around a little bit just bear with me how did I do that again <laughs> I wish I remember these things oh gosh okay uh, I don't know how to do it am I really quiet somebody give me some feedback am I really silent again um, I think that happened last time. Okay, just bear with me. This is the overhead camera, by the way. I'm just going to go into there and see if I um, can make this my microphone. I can't remember how I did it last time. Oh, for goodness sake. Okay, I don't know. Am I really quiet? Can I have some feedback, please? I'm just going to go into... You sound okay here. Okay, I'm good, I'm good, I'm good, because I haven't messed with it, so it should be the same from last time. Right, okay, back to the surprise box. So basically, we've had, um, when we put these boxes together, we always have a theme in mind. Now, this theme, if you haven't seen the surprise box this month, is because it is a surprise. But I'm going to give you a quick look inside now, because every month, towards the end of the month, we will do a make-along for the surprise boxes. So if you have got the box, and you need inspiration it's coming right to you in the next few minutes and if you haven't got the box you might get very tempted to do it but if you have haven't got the box and you don't want the box this will still give you lots of inspiration to um, maybe start needle felting with a stash that you've got at home or maybe just buy some bits and pieces from us I will give you lots of ideas what you could be getting um, if you if you want to buy from us right so let's have a look inside the box now my box is really messy there's one here but I've messed with this one because I've been uh, going in and out and I've been playing already this morning and it's all very very exciting but I will just share with the overhead camera what's inside and remember it's messy because I messed with it right you get a big um, a big um, strand of the uh, cream colored top this is a South American which we um, we have as a as a regular in our stock and this is a new one. This is a one-off, um, which um, you're not going to find on our website, but it is a, it's almost a little bit like a very pale, uh, I want to say a very pale apricot. It's not quite cream. It's got a little bit of pink to it. Um, beautiful, beautiful, beautiful. And then this is our jet black uh, South American top, also a staple. You can buy this anytime from us on our website. Um, and that um, obviously is in there too. And then we have got in there... Um, a new one and an exclusive one and um, we have called this um, extra raspberry ripple South American uh, South African tops extra um, raspberry ripple because there's lot little ice cream but lots of um, um, raspberry coolie in there um, and um, it's beautiful because it's it's I, uh, honestly I can't wait to show you what you can make with it and then we've got our fuzzy yarn now this is something that we've introduced to you during the advent calendar and you can also buy this in all kinds of colors now on our website so love this and I've got a special surprise um, up my sleeve for you with this one now last but not least you have two pieces of gray felt in your surprise box and they are um, A4 so I'm going to use one of those and I'm going to make a, um, I'm going to make a stormy pink landscape today. Very exciting. I don't know which one to use. I think they're equally as um, tempting and equally as suitable. So mm, which one should I use? I might go for this one um, and I'll put this one back. This is more of a steel gray and this is more sort of, of a, has got a slightly, um, I don't know, a warm gray. Let's, let's, let's use this because the colors here are quite warm. So what I want to show you is that all of these, all of these, okay, all of these, there's five of them, can be turned into all of these. That one, and that one, and that one, and that one, and that one, 
and that one and that one and that one and there could be more there could be more possibilities because I'm going to give you a really good lesson on how to mix colors and look five colors that look very very um, like one color solid one color with the exception of this one can be turned into all of these beautiful variated uh, variegated colors and um, and I don't know if you can spot but in these there there is actually the fuzzy yarn in there I don't know if you can see it and it adds that lovely extra texture and I can't wait I've got exactly plans um, I know exactly what I want to do with it so I'm going to um, show you this but before I do this I'm going to say hello to some um, of you lovely guys who have joined us here tonight live on Facebook on the um, whatever date it is today it must be the 21st of March <laughs> I don't know if I'm coming or going half the time yes the 21st of March and I'm just going to say hello to some of you so who have we got in the house today of course um, Alicia is there we've got Heather hello Heather Gina Susan Carol, Carol is there, yay! Carol Weiss is actually next door, believe it or not, because she's staying overnight here. She's coming with me to a show tomorrow. Diane is here, um, Ellie is here, Monica, Caroline, um, Alex, hi Alex. So you're all still telling me sound is okay, and that's good to know. Um, Mandy is there, just as well, because I had no idea how I did last time. Um, Katri Katrina is there. Hello, everyone. I'm so excited, even though I can't make a long live. Oh, bless you. <laughs> oh, Sandra is there. Lorna, I can hear you fine today. Excellent. Um, and, um, oh, no, Monica says she can't hear anything. Why can't you hear anything, Monica? Turn your volume up. Um, user error, she says, of course. Not me this time, thank good. Thank goodness. Laura is there, hello Laura. And uh, Valeria, happy spring indeed. Um, it is the beginning of spring. And we had a tiny little glimpse of that. I don't know about you, but we had a bit of sunshine today. It was very windy, but the sun was there too. Right, let's get straight away cracking on this, um, on this landscape. I'm gonna put my uh, felt piece down. So I have decided today to use the Earth Friendly Felting Mat but I've got it the firm part facing up. So the soft part, which is um, what often we have facing up, is at the bottom and the firm part is facing up. And that is because it has got such a nice resistance when you stub into, into this, especially when you're felting something flat. Um, it literally makes no indentation um, at all. Not that the other side makes a huge indentation, but you can just feel the softness a little bit. And this tip was actually given to me by a, 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 a professional a landscape needle felter. So I'm, I'm really excited by that. Now I'm going to draw on this because I have a, a landscape in mind and I'm just going to grab a pen. Um, I've got pink sharpie here. I'm not sure if that will work or let's, let's, yeah, let's use a dark one. Let's use a brown one. And all I'm going to do is I'm going to draw a very sweeping landscape with um, um, with a sort of a, um, a horizon here. That's all I'm going to do first. Here's my horizon. And then I've got a, a bit of a hill here. And I've got um, another bit of, um, of land here. And the idea is that this here in the middle is going to be water. That's all I'm going to do. And then I'm going to put a tree on here, but I'm not putting that down yet because I want to create this very, very atmospheric stormy sky. And for this, I will need my my pinked, my pink mixes, the mixed pinks. That's what I wanted to say, not the, not the pink mixes. Not the pink mixes, the mixed pinks. That's what I wanted to say. Right, so how did I do this? So, okay, here's your wool. You tease off a strand. Only take as much as you can actually manage in your in your hands. And then I've got a little bit, I can take a little bit of this again, tease it off. Why do we never cut wool? Um, I don't know if that pops through anybody's head, but if it does, don't get tempted to cut wool because um, when you cut it, you actually sever the fibers. And all these fibers, they're not all that long. They're all um, lined up 
but they're sort of they when you pull them you slither they slither away from each other and that means that you don't get short fibers but if you cut it you suddenly have got very short fibers so don't do that and then I have got um, this lovely color here as well and it's those three colors that I'm going to work with first now this is quite a lot I'm also finding it easier to um, to mix wool whilst I'm also ever so slightly shortening the fiber so now I am trying to shorten the fiber whilst I'm mixing it so notice that I'm overlaying them and I'm oh this looks like rhubarb and custard to me now that looks very nice and I'm mixing these fibers now I don't want to mix them too much because what I'm going to do is I'm going to lay them out here for a very sort of moody stormy sky which at the moment looks quite tame but I'm going to put some darker colors in there as well now if you work with a dark felt background let some of it come through because it might just um, add into the mood and um, and then I'm going to also mix some of this um, lovely uh, rasp triple triple quadruple raspberry pink um, in with did I just use the white or the yellow no with the white so that makes um, another interesting mix I'm going to mix that as well so it's going to be lots of mixing you will use very little wool doing this so you will have lots of wool left you can definitely make a second picture if not a third fourth fifth sixth probably more than ten to be honest with this amount of wool um, you just have to uh, get more felt, felt sheets um, so I'm laying it out like like a brush stroke um, so when you work with wool tops it is more like a brush stroke when you work with um, wool bats it's more like a stubbing of the brush itself and all I'm, I'm doing is I'm felting them into the allocated space on my picture which is the sky and it's it is meant to be moody it's meant to be quite a sort of a, a very very um, stormy sky that's what I'm, I want to do so I want to get lots of movement in there and um, of course there are always uh, shortcuts for everything and um, there's no exception for this one so our um, five needle felting tool by Clover speeds things up beautifully if you want to especially if you want to get um, wool down quickly now it works as you can see on our earth friendly felting mat I do love this mat honestly it is just the best um, and just to remind you for those who don't know it is made in the UK um, so it hasn't traveled very far and uh, it is made from 100% um, wool. The wool top, the, the soft top can be home composted and the base has got 30% man-made fiber in it but it will last you and last you and last you. Now whenever you felt something flat you will felt it onto the mat. Now some people leave it on, they don't take it off and you can do that too with this mat. Now I do want to get a little bit more of a of a movement into the sky and I want to make it a little bit darker so I'm actually going to use some of the black and mix it with the pink so that I get a little bit of a dark thundercloud going in there and again I'm just mixing it now you can use other um, other tools to help you mix it I quite like using my hands because it it um, it, it allows me to mix a small portion but you can also use a carder um, and I have got a carder here somewhere. Definitely had it a second ago. Here we go. Now we have these carding brushes, and this is a large one which we don't have in stock at the moment. But we have got small, small ones. You don't actually need to use two. Oh, can see myself. Hello, it's me. And um, you don't have to use two. But if you do use two, then um, then you obviously you use them like this. So you brush against each other, and you transfer the wool from one to the other you can also use it by just getting it onto the brush and taking it off the brush so this is um, I can't remember what this is called again forgotten it'll come to me so um, you can also um, mix it in this way if I take it off the brush now um, and just sort it out a bit so I get the fibers running alongside again it does mix it a lot faster so I'm going to add a little bit of really dark into the into the, my clouds here and the, the dark grey felt works beautifully behind it and um, just for the sake of speed tonight I will be sticking a lot with this five 
um, needle felting tool. If you've never used one of these before, you can um, take the needles out and replace them. Sometimes they do break, especially if you don't come in and out at a very right angle. So with this one, it's not just going in and out at a right angle. You can't go from the side. It, they, the needles really don't like it, so it has to come right from the top. Um, so to take to change the needles, you just unscrew the, the lid at the back here. Um, make sure you don't lose that little silver disc, and then the needles just sit in there, and you can get them out. Sometimes they come out ooh, willingly, as they have just done there, and then you can put that little disc on top again uh, once you've replaced the needles, and the job is done. The tool locks, so at the moment it's on unlock, but if you do want to lock it, you just twist that gra uh, green ring round, and then the shield that normally retracts when you step into your make um, stays firmly in place. So this way it goes back and out, um, it sort of pushes back into the, the tool itself. Right, now I want to say <laughs> that was a really quick sky, wasn't it? But I'm going to put a little bit more in there. So I do want some lighter colors to run through there as well. Um, and I'm just, you can use these colors on their own as well. So where you want to put some highlights in, just put these colors down and um, and just felt them down wherever you feel they ought to be. Look at your picture um, from a different perspective, that's all I will say, that really works well, um, so that you can see the the whole of the... I'm going to take this off, I don't, I don't think I like it being on there all this time. I don't know, it feels like I'm too impatient to do that. Also this mat, I'm, I'm using one of our small square mats, but it's actually, the mat is actually just that little bit, um, it's exactly the same width as my felting um, felt sheet, so I'm missing the corners. Look at all these fibers, I really wish I could find my brush. <laughs> I still haven't got it after so many live streams, I must remember to take one from the workshop. Right, I'm going to fill in a little bit more of the sky by mixing my colors here. And um, so I just wanted to also show you that I, um, you can actually make an orange color. So I, I did wonder whether I could get orange together. So you've got your uh, pink here, and then if you use the yellow, um, well, we all know that red and or and um, red and yellow makes orange, but you can actually use it with a pink and the yellow and mix it and if you mix it nice and thoroughly it does turn um, quite orange so you might have to add a bit more yellow into it but I just love the fact that it, it does that so very excited by that here we go nice nice color experimentation definitely needs to be mixed very well because otherwise you could just spot the um, the pink in there but I think when you mix it really well, you do get quite an orange tone rather than a pink tone, um, or at least an apricot tone. So it's a peachy tone more. I think it's beautiful. Look at this. So at this point, this is the one that I managed earlier. So they're pretty similar. Um, if you want it a little bit more orange, then just add a little bit more yellow into it. And I'm just using it even some more to sort of add details into the sky um, just to cover up more of the grey felt. Um, the reason why you're meant to look at your picture from different angles and directions is because sometimes our brains um, don't quite uh, see or our eyes per perceive, um, give our brain a different information what it should see and, um, and when you look away and then look at it again you give your brain the chance to interpret what's on the sheet and it's often something um, quite surprising. So I've just covered some of the black up but because it's underneath it still shines through so I'm quite happy with that. Right now I'm going to move forward so I've done the sky now I'm going to move to the next layer which is that little bit of, um, of land that's in here and I do want this to be quite um, quite dark so I'm going to use black and I'm going to use yellow and mix the two together I don't think I've done that yet in my um, mixing earlier so that's a color I didn't show you um, if you use the 
if you use the um, slightly uh, creamy or lighter color, it definitely makes a gray. So I'm suspecting that this will make a gray as well, but it might just look a little bit more yellow. Um, so I'll add this into it. And I'm only using what's in the box. So of course, if you are doing this at home and you really, really want something else in there, then go for it. Um, I'm not stopping you, but I want there to be a really dark, sort of almost like a cliff or like a hill um, in the background there. So I'm going to put a little bit of black down as well, especially where the line on top is very precise and that I'm going to felt down with my single felting needle just to get that line, that distinct line, so the land doesn't get smudged into the sky. There. And add a bit more. And I'm actually going to use some of this uh, lovely um, um, fuzzy yarn as well. I'm trying to find the beginning. Here we go. So the fuzzy yarn, what, what um, the way that it's constructed is that you have got, um, it's super soft, it's actually alpaca. Um, it tears quite easily, but though it tears quite easily, there is actually a nylon thread that runs through it. And it's that nylon thread that you need to cut, catch and um, pull out, because that stops it from um, tearing. So I've just pulled that out and now I've got literally a very, very soft um, wool that will actually come apart really easily. Look, very easily. It's almost a bit curly as well. So what I do with this is I tear it into smaller manageable um, pieces. So it is like literally just the fuzzy soft alpaca now um, that has been spun into yarn, but I'm kind of undoing all of that. And then you can use a little bit of, um, I don't know, whichever color you want. I'm going to use two, black and pink. And then just mix it like you did before. Just let the alpaca fiber add some um, texture into into this um, into this mix. How beautiful is that? Look, So nice. And I'm going to put that now onto I think I might put that below the um, just down here for movement for water because the water is uh, the color of the sky because it's reflected really dark and then you can felt it down too so at some point I want to add a little bit of light into it otherwise it's going to be extremely dark and um, I can do this so imagine this is a really stormy stormy um, day but there's still a sun somewhere in the sky so you could just add a little bit of uh, the light color just above here and that can then reflect off the water as well so add this down and I'm going to have to fill this bit in here yet but I'm just going to add a little bit of that lighter color into the area here um, to um, to just add a little bit of light. Maybe it's the moonlight even into the into the water here. And I'm going to fill in more of this little bit of land that's sticking out there. So for this, I'm using the dark wool. And I might even mix it with a lighter wool to make a grey. I know the um, background is already grey, but this one obviously will give a lot more texture into um, the landscape. And um, let's see what happens with this. Now, when you do backgrounds, they can often be a little bit boring to do because um, there's not, not much happening. It's only when you start adding things into the foreground that the background becomes interesting. Um, so bear with it. It will all happen in front of your eyes. Now I'm going to use my single needle for a minute just to get the lines down a bit more distinct. So I want to make sure that this stays a really distinct line because that is the that is definitely the um, the land that I'm adding into it and I do want there to be a very distinct difference so I might even add a line a very very thin line just into the edge here 
so that it stays separate. And remember, I've only got five colors to work with, and I've got to, I'm mixing them to make sure that I'm getting this, um, that I can only use what's inside the surprise box. That's the idea of these make along. So whatever you get in your surprise box, you can probably just use that to create a picture. And let's go down here a bit more. I've got a black line. And add that into it as well. So my plan is, um, is to fill all of this in for water. But it's, I also do want to, um, it, it will be all really dramatic and the color, the colors will be, um, will be quite um, pink because it reflects from the, from the pink sky, whatever's going on in there. I, I want to have as a reflection down here in this area. And so I've got, I've got to color all of this and then I'm going to make the foreground. This is a piece of land here and then I want to, tree that bends in the in the stormy breeze and the stormy wind um, to lean over to one side. So that is the plan I have got. But things don't always work out like plans. So um, let's uh, let's just check in with everybody how things are going at your end. And I'm going to show it to you this way because that's a different perspective. And also for me, if I can see it. Um, yeah, I can I can definitely see where I'm heading with this. So that's good. Um, so what can I tell you? Well, I have got some always some news to tell you um so obviously um this month march we've still got the uh, moon gazing hair which has been an absolute success our makers book so please if you are debating whether to get it don't debate just get it uh, you don't have to subscribe you can also buy it as a one-off kit however you do save yourself quite a bit of money if you if you do subscribe remember our subscriptions are not binding so you can get out of um, the subscription at any point and you can um, also skip boxes which quite a lot of people do so if you don't fancy the next one then just give that one a miss talking about the next one hopefully you won't give it a miss but this is what you're doing in the next one you're making two little humbug pig, piggies and um, you will also get um, the mat in the maker's box to have them snuffling and playing widely on the forest floor. That um, um, So they, they both are made uh, with, with a very simple wire armature and um, you can bend their legs to make them lie down or however you want to display them. I've just thought baby piglets they're probably quite playful as well so they might be just having a rough and tumble on this one here so this is coming up um, in April for the makers box then we've got the iris fairy which I don't have have here and I can't show you but she's yellow and yellow iris fairy she's very beautiful and then also uh, we have got um, in the um, surprise box uh, we have got whatever the weather and I've worked on that today as well and I, I, I can tell you now what I'm planning to do and that is a fairy in the rain Mm -hmm. a fairy in the rain so um, um, that has revealed that but we have I have got some um, news to share with you as well so first of all um, our next live streams um, make a note in your book um, 6 30 on Tuesdays on Facebook that's our Facebook group the makers with two uk on Facebook um, on Tuesday the 28th of March we have double trouble we're going to make a curly sheep and a round um, bunny. Now the curly sheep is also called round sheep which is extra confusing so two round um, makes. Hopefully I fit all of this in, in into um, it should actually say 6.30 on Facebook. Um, if you can see 17.30 on Facebook that has not been updated. We are now streaming at 6.30 on Facebook um, 6.30 p.m. and um, I think that might actually be British summer time um, at that point. Then of course the week after we've got the sub box reveal and then uh, the week after that on the 11th of April we've got uh, the Royal Pooch. Now the Royal Pooch kits hopefully um, should be live, um, I would have thought, well before that anyway. So I'm working hard on that as well. I've got so much to do I don't know where to, where to begin first. But um, you will um, love our next um, our upcoming sub boxes because as I said wild boar iris fairy and whatever the weather and then um, in May we have got the teacup pig I'm 
Honestly, you will love it. You will absolutely love it. The Marigold Fairy, which is an orange fairy, and then the surprise box is five a day. Now, I'm still debating what we're doing there, but it could well have something to do with food. And then we have got in June the turtle, a seashell fairy, and the surprise box theme is oceans. Now, I do have an idea what I will want to um, show you on in the oceans box, but I'm going to keep that under wrap for a minute. So that's um, some of the news that um, are happening um, over the next few weeks and months. But we've also got a workshop happening in our workshop in Nailsworth again. And this time it's it's led by a talented Carol, Carol Wise, who uh, will be teaching you how to make the poppy landscape from our kit. Now, this is, um, is, is a beginner's workshop. So if you've never needle felt it before and you do want to make a landscape under the tuition of somebody who knows what they're doing, then you can join us um, on the uh, Friday, the 19th of May, and it is from 10 until three. So it's, it's a five hour workshop. We'll um, give you lunch as well and refreshments and all the rest of it. You can, um, you can make use of an early bird, um, booking which is before the 15th of April and that that will be £70 per person or after that it will go up to £80 per person however if you bring a friend um, then it will stay at £70 per person um, so if, you, if you're coming in twos then um, or threes or fours whatever then you each will only be paying £70 anyway there are limited spaces our workshop space isn't all that big so I think we're going to limit it to maybe eight potentially 10 but that's it so I'm guessing that a lot of people who are local to us will come but you never know maybe you think let's have a trip to Nelsworth see what's going on in the makers um, headquarters and you can do a bit of shopping as well <laughs> anyway just saying right let's get back to the picture so I'm gonna add more of um, the water in here I don't quite know if it's a sea or a lake or whatever and I'm going to use some of my pre-mixed wool so I don't have to mix quite so much um, all the time so I'm laying these out here and I'm going to stuff them down with my very efficient five needle felting tool five if um, let's talk about uh, that so if you have um, one of these this is a brush mat if you haven't got one you can buy it from us this is well used as you can tell you can use this too you can use this with a Glover tool it's obviously it's it's even color coordinated um, or if you've got a seven needle felting tool which looks like this that's um, it is a slightly less uh, good quality but it works um, quite well on um, felting on felted pictures um, again same principle the shield retracts you can lock it um, it's a little bit haphazard guessing when where it's locked and where not but it does go through the felt um, and into the brush this tool however does not work on our um, earth friendly felting mat the needles are too close together and um, you have to make sure that you're not felting on too, um, a too thick a, a background but it does work very efficiently on a brush mat so if you've got it and um, you've always wondered what to use it for well here you go you know now it is definitely a good one to use for flat felting but do use it on a brush mat incidentally if you think oh i've got my my, my foam mat i don't need to buy anything it does not work on um, a foam mat either um so i'm gonna just felt down the sky a bit more because it is actually quite efficient in uh, those extra two needles definitely make a difference and you can always tell how efficient the tool is if you turn it over and the wool comes out you can see a lot more has come out here than it has at the top so it does work quite well so i might use this a little bit as well just to speed things up at my end um, you can take all the time you want because you can watch me and then do your own or put me on pause and catch up it's entirely up to you okay so um let's add a little bit more in into here i'm going to add a bit more gray um sort of like the gray color of water and i definitely want to put a bit of um, light in there as well so it's not all dark and gloomy felt the 
this down. I love these viscous wool um, felt sheets. They are unbeatable. I, I won't mention any names, but I have recently had to go enforced because I needed it there and then a certain color. Um, I had to go to one of the bigger stores um, that sell craft materials. I won't mention any names. And I had to um, buy some felt there. Oh, it was, it's so horrible. I actually put it in the bin. I really did. It is, it was the worst felt. I wouldn't use it to save my life. I had to sew something with it. And I, I thought I cut out the wrong shape, but it's actually, it stretches. It stretches one way, but not the other. It was absolutely awful. These felt sheets, they don't stretch. They don't go out of shape. They don't tear. They're just really reliable, especially when you have to um, step into them a lot. So I, I cannot recommend them enough. They're absolutely fantastic. So what I'm, um, what you've learned so far is that when you're needle felting a landscape, you 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 get sort of a rough idea of where the land lies, literally, and then you're going to lay um, the wool out by starting at the um, on the sky, and um, and filling in your um, your land. Uh, well, start with the sky, fill in the sky, and then go work your way down towards the foreground of the picture. It is quite good to have this distinct um, line where the sky and the water meet so you, so they don't all become one mush. Same with the, with the land. Um, so I've got sky, land, water. So I've got three elements here which I'm trying to um, make look quite separate. So um, I'm going to just con continue coloring this in because that's what I'm meant to be doing. Um, I'm going to use a little bit more of the black and um, a little bit, let's use a bit of the yellow mixed into it. So this is all completely random, just have a play. If you don't like it, you can cover it up um, again so, or lay another color over it if you need to soften it. And um, I'm also what I'm also going to do is because this is a stormy night I need to bring a little bit of movement into the water so I'm going to actually um, add a few little waves in there in a minute um, so just give me a chance so at the moment it looks calm but it's not going to be calm water I want it to be um, I want it to be wild wild and um, and um, yeah, wild and movement. So I can actually put details into there that don't look so don't look so um, straight as I've been putting the wool down, and um, they look a little bit more like th a bit of turbulence there in the water. You can use mixed wool for this as well. Just scrunch it up a bit and don't have it um, all nicely lined up. Make it a little bit more turbulent so you can and uh, some of this detail can be added at any point you don't have to do this now you can do this later so i'm just adding a little bit of um, movement into my picture by scrunching up the wool and um, creating little little waves literally little waves here um, and i can do more of this later on but now i've got the, the task to fill in yet another big piece here and i'm going to make that quite dark because this is um, so there's a foreground and this is also where I want um, the tree to come from so I'm using um, the same colors basically but I'm giving it sort of a different um, if you look here the sky is quite light then you've got the dark land and then you've got sort of the movement in the water and I will make that a little bit more um, um, distinct as well um, and, and for the land, I'm, I want to stay with dark colors. So I'm making a dark mix here with um, the black. And I'm going to add a little bit of um, the pink in as well. It would be really nice to have some blue in there, but I haven't got it. And it would also be nice to have some green, but I haven't got it. So I'm going to make do with what I've got. But I do want it to be quite a dark mix. So there's a bit more, maybe I can use the carder again. Flick carding, that's what it's called, because you're flicking it. You're just flicking it from your hand and putting it onto the carder and it does mix it quite nicely. So 
I could also with this, I'm going to give it a different texture and make it look differently by also not necessarily um, felting it down in that uh, brush stroke way, but more in a scrunched up way. A little bit of a mix between what I did in the water and um, yeah, the water is sort of a mix of what I'm doing here now and what I did in the sky. So I do want this to be a little bit, look a little bit more solid rather than a, um, um, like a smooth surface. So again, you can mix this with your carders. Add, always add more to it if you want. It's always better to go a little bit on the um, smaller side and then add more if it be. Anybody coming to the Stitch Festival this year um, will be down at the Business Design Center as of um, Thursday. We're setting up tomorrow. It's going to be a long um, weekend for us. Uh, back, We'll be back on Sunday night, back at home, and then we're off to Craft for Crafters again with a Thursday start, but that's a three-day show, so um, from Thursday, Friday, and Saturday, and that is down in Exeter, and I know some of you have been buying workshop places. Now, we will have some spaces um, available on the day as well. So notice that I'm actually mixing this wool now because I want it to be less um, smooth. I want it to be like um, the surface of, of um, I don't know, of land rather than the smooth surface of a, of, of a, or the way that the sky runs, it doesn't look oft, it still looks quite, because the clouds are obviously haven't got, um, haven't got stones and, and um, soil in it, so I'm going to make that look a little bit um, more turbulent, that's the word I'm looking for. Um, in all of this, you might have suddenly think, actually this looks now <laughs> more like the water um, you know that you can you can change it however you want to this is this is this is a um, a very stormy landscape that i'm doing here um i my guess is that when i put the uh, the tree in there there's no doubt what it will be but you can you can change it it doesn't have to be what i'm doing here you can make up your own landscape it is definitely quite dark and and that's what i'm aiming for so but you, of course, you can do whatever you like. And in a minute, I'm going to put a very a clear line in between the land and the water again, because I don't want it to get lost. There is definitely a clear line, and I'm going to do that with a bit of black again, um, just to um, emphasize that this is a different part of the picture. So I'm felting down the edge, so to speak, between the land and the water. Huh? It's quite a dark mood going on here, um, but we do have cloudy and stormy nights, so um, maybe it's not even night, maybe it's the end of the world. <laughs> oh dear, it's not really my style doing dark things, but um, I think this will work quite well. And um, the reason why it's dark, it's probably mostly because of the of the dark background. Um, you would have to cover up um, very thoroughly with very light colors. So I would I would go for a um, I would go for a lighter background felt sheet. We do they do come in all kinds of colors. And if you if you want to make a, a happy, very bright. Um, landscape then definitely try um, our warm landscape it's one of our best-selling landscapes people love it because um, it's got spring flowers in it it's got very green lush grass it looks just like spring has just sprung so um, do have a look at that we've also got a poppy landscape we've got our new one is our sea seascape landscape um, we have got a cool landscape and we also have got um, a morning landscape, which has also got pink skies, but it's not quite as as, as dark as this one. So I think that um, I've probably, um, um, I think I want this to be even a bit darker. So I'm going to put some more black in there, um, which has just fallen down. Oh, here we go. So I'm just gonna mix, in fact, I, yeah, I just put it down as it is. I'm going from one tool to another. 
Um, and what I'm going to do next is I will put that tree in here now because I think that um, there's no point doing anything here behind the, the scene because it just um, it, it, it just gets covered up. Now for the tree, I want to use the um, fuzzy yarn because I think it works really well um, and the black. Um, now you could use more of the fuzzy yarn than black and remember to take out that long nylon thread. Um, it, I think it will come out naturally because it, um, it, it doesn't like being torn. So keeping shortening that takes a bit longer to make, mix with this because you've got to prepare it into shorter lengths first and then take black, mix it. I'm going to make a sort of a tree trunk now, flick carding. So you don't need two carders, flick carding works quite well too. It mixes it quite quickly, you just might have to put it back into the right order again once it's mixed. Okay, so what I'm planning to do is, um, I've got this vision in my head, I'm going to put a tree down here, so that needs to be quite distinct from the rest of the picture. So I'm starting with a tree trunk and I want um, it to sort of spread out at the base because that's where the roots are obviously. Now because it's a windy, stormy, cloudy day, the tree is going to lean in where the wind blows it sideways. So I want the, the, the tree to be leaning to the side. And now you can use the individual fibers to help you um, make branches and the roots. We can work some more on the roots in a minute. Let's just get the tree leaning. And if you keep the, um, the fuzzy yarn thread going through, it, it, it just softens um, the color of the, of the tree so it doesn't look just completely, so you can see it is, uh, the, the branches are, I'm finding it really hard to needle felt and talk today. So I'm, I'm not sure if I'm making much sense, but I know what I'm doing, just watch what I'm doing. Um, making a tree. <laughs> I think you get the idea that the tree is leaning over to the side and then you can add individually individual branches to bigger branches and more more individual branches and make them longer just have the tree blowing to one side and um, you can see now why I haven't filled in more of the background um, because you're covering quite a lot of the background as well so um, the tree is definitely firmly rooted here on the land and it's, it's, um, sometimes it's important to put really strong lines down. So for the roots, you want you want that to be there. You want them to you want to see the roots anchored in that picture. So put the strong lines down and have that tree tree blowing. But you can always um, one hundred percent. You can always still color in or make the the bits that you've made uh, tone it down a little bit. I mean, I'm going to put a little bit over the top here because that looks really, really light. So I'll make that a little bit less um, turbulent or bright. And you can embroider on there. You can add, um, add sequins and beads or um, use different textiles. You can sew onto it. There's anything's possible. I'm using what was what came in the surprise box this month, which is um, called the Make Along surprise box. Um, but you can definitely use whatever else you've got in your stash. So this is just an idea. The uh, surprise boxes don't come with a set of instructions. They just come with uh, inspiring colors and textures and uh, maybe a headline to give you an idea of what you could be making, not on this one, but in general, they, they do. So make sure that you have um, your subscription box 
for next month or even this month you've still got time they always finish at the very end of the month and this is really fun uh, doing this uh, just completely freestyle I'm really I'm really really enjoying this so you can see there's my very stormy um, landscape I've got the sky with a little bit of light in there and the land there now I'm not so happy I've, I want this to be darker so I'm actually going to add some more black in there but I'm not just adding it um, in in that sort of um, pen um, brush stroke I am adding it by scrunching it up a bit more so I'm breaking up this area a little bit to give it a bit more um, darkness because I think that makes a huge difference and as I say do look at your picture look away and look at it again and you suddenly you know where something is missing so um, yeah definitely add Add to it as you go along if need be and, um, and I think it just um, yeah it definitely makes a difference if you add to it later on because you can your brain has sort of spotted areas that might need a little bit of adjustment but a lot of it is lit literally haphazard completely accidental so any of the movement in there, most of it is, is completely accidental and haphazard. So you can add more um, to the more details to the, to the tree. What works also quite well is to keep now the 3D shapes more 3D. So I'm not felting the tree down too much. I'm actually keeping it slightly lifted off the picture, but I can felt the background down more and I am using my seven needle felting tool because it works the most efficient on this br brush mat. I am um, I love thinking I love to think that we can do everything with our um, earth mat and um, just use all the needles on it but if you've already got a brush mat and this seven needle felting tool then use it you might as well use it it does work really well on landscape pictures. I have no idea how people use it on 3D needle felting, um, which is often, I, I think it often gets missold. Um, so this is the best way to use it, I find, which is felting it, using it to felt down flat surfaces against the brush mat. And, um, and that's how I would use it. But I'm not stabbing into the tree because I want it to stay quite 3D. So I'm literally just stabbing into the background. Now you can put other things into this field. Um, people always talk about how they love sheep. <laughs> you could put sheep in there, poor sheep. Um, you can put more trees if you want. Um, you could put a, a bird in the sky. I don't know that any bird would want to be out in this weather by the looks of it. But you could, um, or maybe shrubs. Um, I think it's quite a, a dark, a dark picture. So I wouldn't, I wouldn't put sort of um, a lot of stuff in there. But you, you can definitely um, still add details to it if you want to. Maybe a fence or even a house in the background. Um, just going to make that um, part here a little bit more distinct between the sky and this moving water in the background. So yes, I hope that this has um, been a bit of a revelation to you. Like I say, add more, add more detail to it. You might even be able to just felt with this fuzzy yarn without having to mix it. That's absolutely possible too. So I would take that nylon thread out in the middle. You could save it up and use it for sewing if you want. I think it's quite a strong thread. Well, actually it can't be that strong because I can tear it. Where's it gone there? Just a black thread that seems to sit inside there. And um, add some more detail into that tree. Maybe just using that thread so it's not so black. And adds a little bit of depth into the picture so yeah that works definitely so I'm just folding it over just so that it's a little bit thicker and felting it down works really beautifully for fairy hair so if you think of it actually these colors are really light 
um, and you can make fairies out of it so it doesn't have to be a landscape picture um, this is just an idea it's just an inspiration for those of you who might want to have a go at um, a 2d needle felting picture and um, make a stormy stormy night or a stormy picture if you want to brighten it up you can do this even now just add some brighter colors into the equation so it will it will lift it um, it will make it brighter but um, I think it looks quite um, quite good just with the stormy stormy uh, nights here um, stormy sky and a darkened sky it doesn't have to be night sometimes it can get quite dark um, once the clouds are there and get dark thunder clouds and stormy clouds so you can you can use you can you see I can lighten this up by just adding little nuances into it um, so it doesn't have to be quite so dark if you don't want it to be so dark and you can add a lot more movement into the water as well by literally adding adding little little waves as well so they don't have to be scrunched up they can actually be waves so they can be more like this as well so little waves um, and um, and just movement in the water definitely makes a difference oh, that wasn't quite enough so I'm just taking little wisps of this of this um, beautiful light wool that's not the cream this is the I can't remember what we call it actually we call it the champagne champagne um, color which is um, quite appropriate because it is a little bit sort of champagne-y coloured. I, want I wanted this to be a wave, but it's just become a very... It's like a snake in the water. There. It's better. So you can add movement into the water, you can brighten it up still, and uh, you can add details too. And I think I'm going to call this um, a job done. I have got all of this wool still. It literally doesn't look like I've used any of it. So... Um, Let's have a look at it that way. There you go. I hope you can see it all right. Um, from where I'm looking, it looks um, everything looks really dark today, but I think it's just because I've got, I've got my um, my screen is slightly um, not as tilted as it should be. So I'm just going to look at it myself from a, from afar. Sorry, you can't see this. Um, so I can make a bit more sense of it. Yes. Well, there you go. This is food for thought. Um, and um, I'm just going to have a quick check-in at how everybody's doing. Um, let's see. I uh, can't wait to have a go at this tomorrow. I see the moon behind the clouds, top left. I know, that's what I planned, of course. <clears throat> um, magnificent, magnificent thanks for this, says um, Sandra. Um, and also Sandra says, I had one of those seven needle tools and I threw it away because I thought it didn't work. Wish I'd kept it now and bought a brush mat to use alongside my maker's mat. Oh, I'm so sorry. Never throw anything away when it comes to needle felting. I see a ghost, says Alicia. Really? Okay. Alicia sees a ghost. Love the tree. Thank you, Lorna. Um, I haven't seen the fuzzy yarn before. It looks great. Um, thank you, Laura. And uh, Alicia very helpfully listed all of our landscape kits there. So we've got the warm um, landscape, the morning landscape. And of course, uh, remember to get your subscription box still. Um, can we join the poppy field workshop online or is it only face-to-face? Uh, -face? It is only face-to-face -face at the moment. Oh, no, I should have thought of that question beforehand. Um, yes. Uh, can we, oh no, that, that was the question, aha, um, so some felt sheets, that they come in different sizes, our felt sheets, but if you get one of our, um, I think they're 30 by 45 centimeters, that should make you a, that should make you two A4 pictures, is it actually that, is it, um, no, it's more than that, uh, can't, can't remember what size they are, but it makes two A4, um, if doing into hoops, I have used linen, which does work, but 100% wool felt bases are my preference. Now, I, I also, I want to definitely try the 100% uh, wool felts as well. They're just, they're just a little bit more exp expensive, so we're always trying to be um, 
thoughtful so that everybody can um, afford our our um, goodies. But yes, wool felt is on my list of, um, of things that I want to add, um, as many others are. Right, have I got have I got anything else to tell you? Um, oh, if you're watching this live on um, on Facebook, stars are always appreciated. So thank you. Please um, give us a star if you like what um, you see. This is obviously a free tutorial, but um, a star is never um, is never misplaced. And um, um, we've done that. We've done that. We've done that. Oh, summer retreat. We haven't done that. Hello, say the bears, the jointed bears, wireless jointed bears. Um, their arms, legs, and head are fully movable, so they can turn them and wave your heart, wave their arms and stand on their legs and all the rest of it. Um, you can make your own design bear. Uh, it is the 21st to the 23rd of July. That's a Friday to Sunday. Lots of needle felting fun. The spaces are filling up nicely. I'm very excited that also people want to stay in the bell tents, which I would prefer any time. Um, not because the uh, accommodation in the house is so awful, but I love sleeping outdoors. The, uh, the accommodation in the house is very basic. I can't stress it enough in case you think it's a luxurious hotel. It is not. Um, they're clean, they're comfortable, and it's a light and bright place and what's more is that you won't have much time um, in bed because you'll be stabbing away at um, your design bears now you can make them in any color you want just give us the heads up what they are what color you have in mind and even if you want to make a special bear one that's dear to your heart one that you need to share a photo with uh, with us then you can do that too we will do our very best to support you and um, we have always done that at retreats with the dragons, own design dragons, own design when we did the Vikings. There were a few people who did Vikings, but there were also people who did some something entirely different. And then um, the horse, um, the horses that we did this year in the winter retreat, they couldn't have been all more different from each other. So from unicorn to um, cart horse to fantasy horse, um, everything was possible, all colors and shapes as well. So if you are interested in that, then please, um, drop us a line info at the makers for to make the teddy bears at the summer retreat info at the makers .co .uk, makers with two s's remember to um tag us on any of your um makes do do hashtag us um sorry do uh, tag us on and hashtag us on instagram um the makers and then on facebook our um tag is the makers .co .uk. if you if we don't come up just keep typing it and we will come up there's only one that has that uh, exact name and then of course our facebook group has got um is open to you but we do ask you to answer our three questions please otherwise we have to decline you and it's everyone a maker on our Facebook group and if you're watching this on YouTube then give us the thumbs up give us the thumbs up anywhere I don't care just give us thumbs up and of course subscribe to our YouTube channel as well so that you never miss out on any free tutorials that we are offering to you and of course we also do a technical um, technical bits and pieces and we talk about how to use our supplies and tools and um, materials so there's a wealth of information it's all there for you to take and um, absorb and uh, be happy needle felting that's all for me tonight I'm gonna go and have some supper now and I um, I look forward to seeing you face to face at any of the shows that we're doing this year there's quite a few lining up we've just signed up for the gardeners um, BBC Gardeners World Fair at the NEC in June and we're also coming for the first time it's our um, maiden uh, voyage to um, the Artisan Festival um, in um, at the Hampton Court Palace in May so if that that's a regular um, a, reg a regular show for you you will see us there but if you never been maybe we can do this together for the first time so um, check it out on our website what events we're going to and of course we always send newsletters out at the end of each month so if you're not on our uh, mailing list then you can uh, join this by going on to our um, on our website in um, which is www. ah it's here I'm not gonna even say it uh, the makers.co.uk I did say it and, um, and join our mailing list because on the back of our newsletter there's always a freebie instruction as well which is also featured on our website always a free tutorial always a, a really small little 
thing to make and uh, this month in March it, have, it was little Easter eggs, tiny little Easter eggs and next month it will be baby bunnies, no bunny babies, always get that wrong, bunny babies, okay, the emphasis on babies, not bunnies, but they're babies dressed up as bunnies, now you're truly intrigued no doubt, okay that's all from me tonight, um, take care everybody, see you very very soon, bye.